ओके सो नमस्कार प्रणाम गुड आफ्टरनून वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट एपिसोड ऑफ द सेलिब्रेशन विच आर बीइंग डन जॉइंटली बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ टूरिज्म एंड एसोसिएशन ऑफ इंडियन यूनिवर्सिटीज टू सेलिब्रेट आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव यू ऑल नो दैट वी हैड प्लान ए ट्वेल्व सीरीज ट्वेल्व एपिसोड सीरीज in which we are acquainting our students our teachers the general public about what is what, what rich heritage what rich culture the country has so today is the seventh episode in that particular series and today we have with us uh, bindu ji and bindu menon bindu menon ji and she has been a, a traveler i mean women traveler who has been traveling the whole country with herself and some children and she will tell you that how rich our country is and how much we can look forward to our country rather than thinking of going to the foreign countries and exploring the foreign countries so if we explore our own country first then go to foreign countries you will see that we we are really culturally rich we have many many uh, areas where the uh, tourism is flourishing and where the people are wanting to go and even i mean especially for women they can travel alone they can travel in a group and they can travel solo so that type of a sort of passion should be there with you so uh, bindu ji over to you she will be telling you all about traveling and how traveling can be converted into a passion over to you bindu ji thank you so much ma'am namaste and uh, good afternoon to all of you and uh, thank you for being here on a saturday afternoon uh, sparing your time for this but i promise i'll make it as exciting as possible my um, when i was first told that this webinar is coming up i was very excited because uh, i am a very passionate traveler and i am a fiercely proud indian so for me i can see there's so much about india that the world should know about and luckily for me my job as an expatriate location specialist is all about helping expatriates coming down on long assignments to come down to india and settle down understand the indian culture the do's and don'ts at corporate level and also at a social level and you know uh, help them settle down with ease so these are people from every part of the world and they come in a very senior position like a president of the company or it could be the you know the ceo of tata motors it could be anybody like that and they come from uh, you know all well advanced countries so when they come down here they look at what what they have in india and before they start making their own judgments we are there to tell them that culturally we are different and this is why we are like this and this is why we do like this and therefore you should be sensitive to the environment and you should be sensitive to the culture and this is how you will have to move forward so because that's my job it's a beautiful opportunity for me to speak about india on a daily basis to people coming from abroad so when someone told me that when you know when the ministry of tourism team told me that i have to address university students i was very excited because um the 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 world is in your hands today i think youth is what is driving all over the world but i will talk about india i think youth is driving our country so i have some facts i've read about uh, you know some art in some articles i've got some facts i'm going to share that with you so come with me and let's see where i'm going to take you so um we are calling you know the youth of india today is our demographic dividend so the average age is 29 and we are actually we can boast of being one of the fifth world's fifth largest youth population which is big and because all of you are hooked on to your smartphones you are so aware you are so well informed you are so tech savvy anything can be done at the tip of your fingers you know that's where you are today which means you're a very lucky generation you have it all right there कहते हैं जिंदगी आपके मुट्ठी में है इट्स रियली लाइक दैट यू नो सो यू यू कैन यूज द स्मार्टफोन यू कैन यूज द इंफॉर्मेशन दैट्स अवेलेबल यू कैन यूज द द अपॉर्चुनिटीज दैट आर प्लेंटी इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एंड चेंज योर कंट्री द वे यू वांटेड टू बी ओके सो 86% ऑफ इंडियंस इन द 10 टू 25 ग्रुप एक्सेस द इंटरनेट व्हिच इज नॉट सरप्राइजिंग एट ऑल वी नो दैट इंटरनेट रेवोल्यूशन हैज taken india to another level even to the rural parts of our country if you go there every kid out there has a smartphone and you'll be amazed to see what all they know not just instagram but youtube channels and what how they take videos it is fascinating to see the amount of creativity that this whole internet revolution has spurred 
So whatever exposure you have to news and views, uh, you know, you are an aspiring lot because of the information you have. You read, you watch videos, and you, you know, you discuss among yourselves and you aspire to do so much. So we're trying to tell you that what you do, you can do it in your own country to begin with. Yeah. So India Today came up with an article recently, which uh, I think they interviewed about 8,000 young Indians and asked them what is their dream of India for the future. So, you know, these are views expressed by youngsters like you. It says digital infrastructure is the bedrock of change. Absolutely. I think where we are today digitally, we should pat our backs because in the world, I don't think there's any country that is rapidly moving towards a digital uh, change. You know, the, 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 the fascinating opportunities that digital revolution has offered Indians today is something that we should be proud of. So it says, I'm sorry, I have a very bad cold, so I'm, I'm struggling with this voice. When the world thinks digital, it should think India. So says one of the youngsters. I think it is so true. Um, there's so much happening that you don't have to look outside. You don't have to be one of the advanced countries today to say that you're digitally, you've arrived. We have actually, if you look at the internet penetration, if you, if you look at the <clears throat> usage, so another person says, a country which is safe for women. So parents don't pull their daughters back from achieving their dreams. What does it mean? It means if the country is safe for them and if, they, if, they, if it is safe for them to travel, if it is safe for them to work in an environment that is safe and protective, then sky is the limit for women today. There's so many, uh, so many women out there who have broken the glass ceiling and they've shown us where, you, you know, where if you have the right education, if you have the right support and the and the encouragement from the community around you, you can reach any height you want and you can actually see the dream that you've been nurturing all these years. So it says one, you know, India is like a romantic partner, flexible, understanding and open to change. I think that's what makes our country what it is today. The diversity, the sheer diversity that our country offers uh, from the language, the food, the everything about the culture, the fabric and uh, the, the music and every aspect of it, the diversity is what makes us very flexible. We are open to anything. We can adjust and we are so adaptable um, because our own country, like I always say this, it's like a continent. It's not like a country. Every state is different from the other. So we are open to so many changes around us and that makes us very adaptable. And this is going to be one of our greatest strengths in the future. One says India is, India is going to become one of the most famous, balanced and welcoming countries. Welcoming we've always been. Atiti Devo Bhava is, is something that we've been talking about right from day one. So I think welcoming we've always been. It's a question of how balanced we can be now and famous for all the right reasons. <coughs> Sorry. Now there are some who are dreaming with a purpose. Okay. So one person said India as a developed nation, it, we have to be self-reliant which is so true today we are getting there we are trying to be as self-reliant as possible and that is not a dream that is too far away and we have to recognize our own strengths before we talk about how self-reliant we can be we have to be environment conscious that is non-negotiable you have to wherever you are environmental responsibilities you have to take it upon your shoulders especially the youth of india because you are the one who's going to drive the country to where it should be or where it can be, the potential to be. And yes, breathing clean air, that is the basic, basic need. These are all views expressed by youngsters like you. So I'm sure you'd be able to relate to some of those views that uh, people have mentioned here. All young adults that we're talking about. Yes, in India where everyone is more aware, open-minded, considerate. Yes, you have to be sensitive. Um, to sensitive to another culture, sensitive to another practice that they follow, sensitive to uh, faith, everything. Sensitivity and, and kind of being considerate is very, very, the, it's the need of the hour today. You have to include travel in your education system. I strongly believe in that because uh, how much can you read from books alone? You are all university students out there and you know that one field trip that you go to, you learn so much more than just learning from books, right? I strongly believe in that. And this is what I have done for my daughter, who's 20 now and studying marine biology. I have ensured that she and her friends 
who grew up together you know they had holidays every year we would travel to some part of india or or the other so what i'm trying to show you in the next few slides is that you don't have to go to um, one part of india that is famous or it's in that book or you have to go and see this monument it doesn't have to be like that just step out of the city that you're in or even the little town that you're in you will find one part of india that is fascinating and you just go there with a purpose go there saying i'm going to learn something i'm going to observe a little more this time let me see what i learn this time when i you know travel that is going to teach you much more than what you would do from the books what you would gain from the books yes i also believe in this we have to we have to start small so you know start something like a model in maybe one little locality which can be replicated in the same city and then you you know you replicate the same model successfully in another city or in another town so if something has worked very well in one part of the country it can very well be replicated and you know we can follow it in other countries uh, other cities or states sorry so this is where i um, i'm going to begin my travel stories uh, my travel stories are all real so the pictures you see will be with my daughter or her friends and you know the places are more important see so please focus on the place and the experiences they've had traveling it leaves you speechless then turns you into a storyteller said ibn batuta who is the great explorer that is so true you you go to a place and you see a particular place and you find it so beautiful not just the natural heritage but every part of it the way people live they teach you some lesson what they eat how happy they are there's so much to learn from them right and then you come back and tell those stories to others and in in your case today youngsters you can vlog you can blog you can write you can you can have your own youtube channel i mean the the, the insta reels that you have for me okay i'm sorry yeah so uh, you have to you have to go with an open mind observe everything and come back and tell your stories to others so that you inspire the rest of them and they also learn that yes i should also step out of my usual comfort zone and travel and see new places and learn along the way okay i'm trying to play a video for you so before that i'll tell you all of us have a wanderlust in us all of us have a certain strong desire to travel and explore the world it's there inherently but there are many reasons why we are not able to do it but instead of suppressing it or accepting that we are not able to do it try and come up and see what you can do in the smallest way even if you go if you go just 40 minutes outside your city and if you find something new so when i was in college i remember this is like many years back 25 years back or so um you know i had a friend and he was a photographer where, you know he was a fashion photographer but every time we had um you know we had nothing to do we were bored on a weekend we'd go get on to my scooter and i lived in chennai right so we would just drive from my house all the way to mahabalipuram not to see the caves and the same monument again but we would go and see the salt fields how salt is made that was so beautiful and he could take shots of course and i could come back and write or tell people about it and so just one drive out of your city if you go to bombay bombay is a city like that you just step out of the city and there's tens of things that you can do you can observe you can learn and you will discover and what happens is the whole uh, concept of this presentation is explore india discover yourself because each time you travel to a place if you keep your mind open and if you're open to learning you will pick up something new and see if it relates to some nature about yourself some characteristic about yourself that you know you can kind of find a sink and somewhere along the line you will probably discover yourself in the process that's the whole idea we are talking about okay so i'm calling all young indians to travel with me to explore india and discover yourself i am actually going to try and play a video for you uh, i want you to just shut your uh, you know mind to everything else and just just give me a minute this video is called sounds of nature and i have enjoyed playing this video in some of my webinars i'm sorry about some technical issues that we are having here i'm going to just play this for you close your eyes to everything else 
and just watch this video. You are not able to expand it? I think it was shot in a format like this. Make it full screen, sort of. I'm not able to see that. <laughs> okay, so that's the video I wanted. I wanted to start with because I wanted you to know that it's my home in Kerala. It's a little village called Mannur, which is in Palakkad district. And you, all you will see is verdant sea, just green fields like you saw just now. So when we went home for our summer holidays, every day that was our playground. You know, we would go sit there at the gate, talk to the farmers, um, you know, watch them do their work plant uh, paddy, paddy in the fields, uh, and then harvest time was so much fun and so on. So we are, I'm, I'm trying to tell you that if you have a rural, rural part of India that you belong to, go back and visit that place now and see how it is and see how things have changed and see what you learn from there today, okay? That video was just to tell you that the home that we belong to is where it all began, the passion for travel, and the whole connect with nature that is there. Because whichever part you see, that video was shot at six o'clock in the morning or 6.30 in the morning or so. And all I could hear was chirping of the birds from all over, nothing else. It was pin drop silence, but just chirping of the birds. It's so beautiful until the peacocks came and made a lot of noise and spoiled me. So these are the children I was talking about. The girl in the center is my daughter and the other two her are friends. And this is where they would play when they came for vacations. And they took home, took home so many beautiful memories from here. You know, they played with cows and goats and peacocks and they ate fresh food from the garden. And the other two children uh, who are from Bombay said, we don't have to go to a resort, auntie. This is just enough for us. So if it's all there in your backyard, you just have to bring people, show them what we have and then let them experience it. So talking about Kerala, so one of the first holidays we did was in Tekari in Kerala. And we saw elephants, uh, you know, Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary. That's where it is home to the wild tuskers. But there are experiences like this where you actually get to bathe an elephant. You go on the, you know, uh, the river uh, on a cruise and you actually see the elephants and, you know, coming down to drink water and so on. So at that age, when children experience all this, it stays in their mind, you know, today, after 18 such holidays in their 20 years, they are actually talking about which holiday they like better. What did they, you know, what do they remember from that holiday? And, you know, what they took home and they're exchanging notes about, no, actually, I like this better and so on. So <clears throat> this is Munar, the tea plantations, and this is the Periyar uh, Tiger Reserve. You see the two children just enjoying the bliss of nature, as I call it. I'm going to um, take you through places that we visit and maybe I'll look at the questions later. Now, this is one particular um, picture. I want you to stop and look. Just look at the river that flows from the waterfall. This is nothing but Adirapalli Falls and the Chalakudi, Chalakudi River right here in Trishur in Kerala, which is so accessible. Anybody, anybody can go there. You just come to Kerala. You just reach Trishur by bus, by train, by flight, anything. And you go to this place and just look at it. You don't have to go to Niagara, right? I mean, Niagara is, I'm sure, much, much bigger and in terms of beauty and so on. But look at this. If you haven't seen this, then why are we looking for something else? You should first look at what we have in our backyard is what I'm trying to tell you. The same Kerala trip. Look at the, the kind of experiences they've had. They, we went to the forest and saw wild tuskers. We went to the tea plantations. And we, we actually you know, went to uh, the Adirapalli Falls. We went to uh, the, Vembe, uh, this is the Vembenad uh, Lake as it's called to see the Chinese fishing nets. It, it's a beautiful cruise down 
during sunset, okay? And you go to the end of that and you actually stop there, the boat stops and you can see this tiny fishing nets out there. So it's a lovely experience. And any place you go to, you have to experience the culture of the place, right? You have to eat the local food, you have to listen to the music out there, you should watch the dances and see what is specific uh, in terms of art or culture there. Here in Kerala, it is uh, Kalari, which is the martial art and Kathakali. And we went uh, for a perf live performance of both and the children loved it. We thought, would they sit you know, through a Kathakali show? They actually sat through it because all those expressions that you find on the faces of the dancers, all this was new for them. And when they saw the Kalari performance, they were, they were shocked because they were actually fighting with real swords and fire. And I told them, this is the real Shah Rukh Khan, you know? not the one that you see on the screen because they are doing the real stunts. Coming from Kerala, we're moving towards Tamil Nadu. We went to a, a place called Anekati, okay? And this is again all known for elephants. So Anekati is a place where two rivers meet, the Sirwani and Bhavani rivers. Can you see the might of the river? Um, the guide is actually holding my hand so that I don't just get washed off. And look at the sights. Anekati is a place where Sterling Resorts has a beautiful uh, cot, uh, you know, a resort out there, Sterling Resorts and Holidays. So perhaps that is the only, um, only one that is known, but you can look at other places too. In the, and in 45 minutes from there is the Silent Valley. So when you go to Anekati, try to plan in such a way that you go to Silent Valley as well. And I don't have to talk about Silent Valley. You would all know about what it is. Please go and experience it yourself. This is the Sterling Resort I was talking to you about. Eco-friendly, all bamboo and wood. And even your tea time is facing the river, is by the river. So it's, it's such a beautiful experience. It's so different from being in the city and doing your mundane every day, whether you're studying for your university or people like us who are working. It's such a refreshing change for us, you know? And it's not too far. It's, it's just a few hours from uh, the nearest place, which is Coimbatore. So you can reach Coimbatore by train, you can reach by flight, you can go by bus. It's all accessible. Acres Wild is one property that is not operational anymore, but this is in Kunur. This is another place which, uh, you know, which was one among our first visits, of course, with the children. They got to see how cheese was made, how cows were milked. Every morning they would wake up and go milk about 16 cows, 18 cows or whatever. They did treks, they went to tea plantations, and they did the Uti toy, toy train ride. It's a 114 year old Nilgiri mountain railway line. You have to go there. So for people who are from the North, I'm telling you there's so much in the South for you to see. Similarly, I tell people in the South, you have to, you have to move out of your comfort zone. Just because you live in the South, don't just continue looking at places only in the South. You have to move and see what there is. So yeah, now I come to Karnataka where Jungle Lodges and Resorts is a quasi-government uh, organization that has beautiful, 23 beautiful resorts all around Karnataka. Now, these are all pocket-friendly resorts, eco-friendly. The thing is, the food also is prepared by the villagers out there. So it's not just delicious, but you're actually giving them something to do and live with dignity. You know, you have the river, you have the mountains everywhere you go, they have a resort, which is more like a bamboo hut. It's a log hut. You'll have monkeys coming up and you know snatching your food. And I mean, everything is so rustic, but you should be prepared for that kind of holidays. I'm talking about rustic holidays and pocket-friendly holidays because I'm talking to university students. You're not yet working. You cannot take so much money from your parents and say, I'm going on a holiday. I'm just going for a few days. It doesn't work that way. But what you can do is probably save a little money from your whatever you get, see if you can do at least one holiday every year so that you can see some new place, learn a new language, learn a new culture and understand something. You, you'll also understand, is this the kind of place I want to be in? You might, you might just discover something about yourself. Here again, is, this is Kurg. It's uh, again owned by Jungle Lodges and Resorts, Dubare, uh, you know, it's a Dubare uh, Kurg uh, property where you act, children actually get to spend the entire day with the elephants. They feed the elephants, they bathe the elephants, 
and you can you can you can spend the entire day with the elephants out there at that age it, it you know they don't need anything else and they learn so much that they come back and tell their friends too you will be surprised that right there in kurg which is in karnataka and it's in south india you have a tibetan town you have the monastery kind of an experience out there you you can eat momos you can meet the monks out there you'll forget you're actually in karnataka you'll really feel you're somewhere in you know in the northeast or where where uh, this kind of an environment is usually seen we can go kayaking you can actually laze around and just watch uh, crocodiles swimming Cro crocodiles come to bask in the sun if you see the picture on the left so um, the experiences is what i'm trying to so focus on the experiences i am i am going to be rushing through the pictures because of uh, in, in the interest of time but please put your questions together and we can answer at the end of it the butterfly park this is another beautiful experience butterfly park in banargata which is just a few hours outside bangalore city okay you just drive i'm saying hours because of the traffic you just need to go there and experience uh, the the wilderness of that side banargata you can go on safaris you have uh, uh, adventure activities and uh, a place like butterfly park is something that every student should go and visit because there is so much to learn about uh, the biodiversity the you know uh, about nature and you will find something like this in singapore i know we have in, in many other countries but you you don't even have to go that far it's right here is whatever and very very good quality and the guides are so good the people who come and explain everything to you they're all from the local the local villagers who will come even on the safari you'll find them coming and they are people with true passion when they come with us on the safari you should see their innate um, instinct you know they know exactly where they will spot a deer spot a tiger even or an elephant and they know what exactly to do and they're so natural with it they don't have any airs about it that's the beauty of uh, going into rural india tiger safaris you can live in machans and tree houses like this um i have only read about these things in my school days in the books that we read where you can live in tree houses today it's a reality so you know you can actually do it and in your case with all those information available at your fingertips on the phone you can explore so much more just keep reading just keep observing this is one of my favorite places is the riverton lodge in chikmagalur district in karnataka it's called the riverton lodge because the riverton the bird they come in flocks out there to nest on the banks of that beautiful river badra it's such a beautiful experience to see you're going on a cruise on the river and you'll see these riverterns actually coming there and nesting and you also get to see a tiger if you're lucky during the cruise i'm going to andamans now andamans was an eye opener for me andaman and nicobar islands i have spoken to many expatriates many foreigners when we talking about foreigners people who travel a lot uh, on work also nobody seems to know that you know andaman nicobar islands exist and it is managed by india it's such a beautiful place it's paradise really it's paradise so you get off at port blair and then if you have to go to let's say you're going to have lock island you have a cruise out there ready waiting for you you sit there and it's such a classy looking thing and you it's a it's a good uh, 45 minute to 1 hour uh, ride and they explain everything about the place about and you know andamans is known for scuba diving so they'll tell you about the waters about the marine life and so on this is the radhanagar beach in havelock island now if you look at this if i just put the picture there without showing you you know where it is you could easily think it is thailand it could be vietnam it could be thailand it could be one of those places because those beaches look very similar so we have it all here all you have to do is go to port blair and there you you, you i mean uh, it's accessible by uh, air and you have to you can do the ferry as well and you get to have lock stay there for a few days do a little bit of scuba diving go for those treks you can actually go for night river cruises you can see fascinating fascinating parts of nature like for instance if you um, you you can do underwater walking and see all those wonderful marine creatures you know 
uh, experiences are plenty. I can just go on and on. I'm trying to keep it as crisp as possible. From Andamans, I'm coming to Goa. You, I'm just trying to tell you how much there is in India to explore. So the other side of Goa is what I want to explain to you. I've done this in a couple of webinars before. Dudh Sagar is a place which is known for the waterfalls that look like gallons of milk that is gushing down. So I went there and wrote about it, and that's the article you see. Dudh Sagar was, uh, I got inspired to go to rural Goa after seeing Finding Fanny, that was a Deepika Padukone movie, which actually showed rural Goa. Because Goa is all about Baga Beach, Vagator Beach, Kalangote Beach, and the beaches and parties and, you know, the, the lifestyle of Goans. But the actual Goa, if you want to discover, you should go and see how Feni is made. Feni is a drink which is an inher in inherent part of Goan culture. It's made out of the cashew fruit. And you should go and live in a Portuguese mansion, which is 100 years old, and experience what it was like. It's a, it's a, it's a place where there's huge Portuguese influence in everything that you will see, even in the food. The languages that are spoken in Goa, you will be amazed. It's Konkani, Marathi, Kannada, and Hindi, of course, English. So in just one little union territory out there, the five languages are spoken. So you can imagine the, the diversity that you will experience when you go to this place. Then comes to Maharashtra, Purushwadi Fireflies Festival. Now this is again, for those of you who are somewhere in Maharashtra, it could be Pune, it could be Bombay. You just need to step out. It's a drive, two hour drive. You'll go to this place. Please connect with Grassroots. They're a fantastic NGO that is doing a lot of work in, in um, improving lives of tribals in these villages and giving them something to do, being, making them the guides and uh, you know, ex taking, them, taking people around, guests around. So we stayed in one of those very rustic places. We saw fireflies. This picture was shot by a professional photographer. So it's off the net um, website, but because nobody can, I, I mean, if you're not a professional photographer, people like me cannot shoot a picture like that, but this is what you will see. Um, tens of thousands of fireflies sitting on one tree in the middle of the night at 10 o'clock, you'll go and witness it. And there'll be multi, you know, um, it's like a multitude of people coming to see it, but this pin drop silence, all of us like-minded going there just to witness the spectacle. So on the right side, yes, that's yours truly, that's me. When I say go to a place and experience the culture, also try and be a part of that culture. Visit people, go to the villagers, speak to the villagers out there, go into their kitchens. They actually love it. They feel a little shy, but they actually love it. We walked into a, a lady's house and told her, can we come for lunch? And you know, she, she was hesitant at one point in time, but then we told her, no, we'll pay you. Can you please do a simple lunch for us? And she actually made lunch for us and the children loved it. It's just dal, roti, bindi, um, you know, kachumbar and so on. But it was so fascinating that you can sit there and eat in somebody's house. And she's looking at you like, okay, you're actually my guest. And she loved it. And they made me wear the, uh, the sari the, in the Maharashtrian way. And they love the fact that we become part of their family. I think that is so important, you know, make them feel like we're all one. Now, like I said, grassroots, that's, the organization I was talking about, you can actually go around the village and see people work there and do their daily routines. Um, and you know, but you actually go there and be a part of it. Try to talk to them and learn from them how they do it. And you'll be amazed how they are so happy doing what they do. They don't have any complaints in life. That is what I learned when I went to rural India. Most of the time you see, they are happy in their space. Again, this is strawberry picking in uh, Mahabaleshwar. You actually get to see strawberry farms. You can pick the strawberries, eat it. You can drink ganeka ras out there. And the children can run around the fields and get a feel of all that and then breathe the fresh air. What you pick is what you eat. You pick the strawberries and you put it in the, you know, it goes into the factories, it goes into jams, it goes into squashes. So. And there are women actually who, who stand on the, on, the, um, on the sides of the roads when you drive out of the village, selling pickles and masalas made in their houses. So buy those things, you know, buy those things because they're all, um, you're, you're adding to their livelihood. So you're making them feel that they are also working and doing something out of what they know to do. This again is um, 
Tamini Ghats, which I have to show you one picture on the left side, you see. I was stunned looking at this. I went because a friend of mine was working in the Mahindra school out there. It's again in near outside Pune, a few hours outside Pune. You go to a place, it's the local people who will tell you where to stop and what to see. So the driver actually told us, ma'am, just one minute, just stop here. We want to talk to you. And I, you know, and I, do you want to see something? And they actually took us to this place, which really, to me, it seemed like an Indian version of a Grand Canyon, you know? So it's, it's so, uh, it's, it's overwhelming out there. Nature is overwhelming to a point. Tamini guards, you don't, don't miss this. And look at the kind of accommodation you will go uh, and stay in. There are different ways of doing eco-friendly cottages today. This is at Save Farms in Maharashtra again. Meet people out there, talk to them. They're all national award viewers and artists. They feel so good when they are spoken to, take their pictures because they need that recognition too. Yes, they won the national award, but how many of them actually go and buy from them after that? How many of them go and make them feel important? So do your bit when you go and meet these people. This is a worldly art and this is the weavers in Maharashtra. There's an art village outside Bombay, a few hours again, where you can actually go and learn pottery and art. It's the one on the left. And then you have places like Malad Machi, which is, the, which is on the banks of the Mulshi Dam. And look at the resort that I'm showing you, Jal Shrishti Island Resort. It's actually like an island resort, which you only seen in the movies or read in the books. It's right there outside Bombay. The International Kite Festival, yet another experience you should add to your bucket list because this is where you, every January, people come together from different parts of the world for competitions, kite flying competitions and creativity is at its best at that time. The sizes of the kites and the, the patterns and the designs. And we took the children to Sabarmati Ashram to experience what life was in those days like because they read about it in the history books. And I think they should go there and see what it was. Just the calm and the peace that you find there, I think made the children also feel like there was so much happening in history then and we, and we just read about it. I'm moving up north to Uttarakhand. This is at Sitla Estate where you have accommodation that can actually show you the Himalayas right there when you wake up. Your mornings will begin like this. I, do, I could have put in more pictures. We don't have the time. I could talk even more about each place, but I'm sorry. I'm just going to just show you a little bit. This is more like a teaser for you to say that in one country, we have so many places and so many experiences that you can gain that you don't really need to fret about, okay, where do I, I go next? What holiday should I do? I'm also going to come to the point where how to travel and how to plan your travel. So let me just go through this soon. So in Uttarakhand, there is Kilmora, which is a brand promoted by the Kumaon Grameen Udyog. And they make the best of jams and squashes and masalas and, uh, you know, weaving uh, shawls and all the stuffed toys that you see and so on. And all, everything is towards women's empowerment. You know, making them uh, uh, employable with the craft that they know and that they are blessed with because that region, this is what they do and then making that into a business so that they earn money and they also feel good about what they're doing. Amrik Sukhdev Dhaba is right outside Delhi. And I was, I, for me, a South Indian like me, to go out there and see at 2.30, this picture was shot at 2.30 in the morning. 2.30 in the morning, the place was buzzing with activity. People were ordering food of all kinds. And I'm not talking about tourists alone. They're all the local people too. So it's not, it's, it's an experience. And when you go to Amrik Sukhdev Baba, I heard people observing, now I've not been to that part of London to say what it is like. They said, oh, it's exactly like how it is in UK. And I didn't know that, but I'm saying, if you go in, you'll know all the chocolates that are you know, displayed, all the, um, the, the, uh, the sweet meats that's there. Everything is, it's, it's, uh, you have to just go there to look at the food that is available. So I'm not used to as a South Indian eating makhan like this, right? We don't eat this, this amount of makhan. But when they put it on the, the makhan, the roti, 
it tasted so good and i just forgot my yoga and my waistlines and so on i said like who can say no to this it was delicious 2:30 in the morning i was eating sarsunda saag and makhi di roti so we went to chandigarh i'm going up north now this is a gentleman who insisted that you know i should talk to him and you know hear his stories about how he started this business this daba and yes these are my favorite pictures and the food was to die for we went to rohtang pass after that we went to himachal and we went to rohtang pass we saw the atal tunnel we went riding in the snow all this was as recent as diwali last year so i'm talking about covid or not if you're safe and if you know where to travel and how to travel i think you can go where you want and i was so fascinated um, listening to the news about uh, atal tunnel being open now and uh, i think that's something for us to be proud about we actually went there and sang a song you know looking at nature because so many songs from our movies um you know describing nature it looks so beautiful i've not seen snow you know in, in like this in my life so for me it was my first experience and you have maggi in the mountains can you imagine you eat maggi every day but there is a man making hot maggi when you go to rohtang pass and you will stop there and eat and you will not get that taste if you make maggi at home also and at the same time there was a man whose jeep was uh, parked out there i'm 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 sorry i don't have a picture i only had a video his jeep was parked and there was smoke coming out of it because he had let it on and he had just callously let it on uh, saying that he had to let the motor run and it was polluting the entire place so the minute he saw me take a video he came up to me and said video mat lijiye please because he said he realized that i might put it on twitter or i might put it on social media and you know shame him but yes those kinds also exist we did the hot air balloon and those are the kind of views that you get now this hot air balloon guy he actually taught me something you know he told me about the negi community this is what i'm saying you talk to the locals and you learn so much he spoke to me about the negi community and something very nice i learned the negi community apparently they live for about 6 months or so in complete snow so they have really nothing much to do so what do they end up doing they study and apparently most of them appear for ias and they are successful at it that was a story that blew my mind because i said who would ever imagine if this guy hadn't told me this i wouldn't even know something like that existed and he told me many more stories about negi community which i don't have the time now to say it, but you should know that talking to these locals can open your mind much much more than anything else that you will read anywhere look at the craft of uh, himachal is every place has its own unique craft so that is what you need to you, you need to respect um and you need to admire because this is done painstakingly by hand and look at the apples and we've all seen kashmiri apples in uh, you know boxes but when we actually saw them picked and brought to the stores like this it was a beautiful experience we bought the jams and <clears throat> the weaving the shawls trishla shawl factory we went there and we and that again is a place where women empowerment was evident because most of them were sitting there and weaving and even the people in the store were women and the way they were convincing us to pair up this shawl uh i'm actually wearing a fulkari dupatta from chandigarh so i deliberately wore it to show people that you go there and buy the art of that particular place and you feel proud that you own a part of india in your house so if you come to my house it's like that every part of the house will have something from some part of india that i've traveled it's it's beautiful because when somebody comes and asks me where is it from and i can tell them oh i picked it up from himachal and you know this person there will be a story behind it and that will give you the memory that is associated with it um now i'm saying i'm coming down to practical how to travel what you should do towards traveling and um, i would encourage you to read 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 i think that all of you have started using the smartphones read on your smartphones i don't care but read so read about india this book amazing india is something i use even in my cultural training programs for expatriates because it gives you a state by state dissection of all aspects of culture whether it's food music festivals everything it's such a i bought it for my daughter when she was in school but i use it more like a guide today and articles in the papers every time there's an article what i'm trying to tell you is cut it out 
maintain like a, a diary and put it out there like a scrapbook you know so you will have at, at the end of the year if you look at it you would have made a scrapbook of articles of places that you want to visit or you would love to visit and you can plan accordingly based on the season and based on what your interests are um this book by outlook i'm a fan of outlook traveler and i buy all their magazines and this book is called responsible escapes beautiful lot of information about where you can go if you're an eco friendly person if you're an eco conscious person and you can go to places and experience what it is like uh, to live sustainably and it's possible today <clears throat> here i need this is my bucket list of travels i want you to know that you should make a book or a diary and write down places you want to see if you've never seen kerala put it out there and you know that some day you will go and visit kerala if i had never seen snow in my life at 52 i said i must see snow before i die and i went there so it's it's in the same country there's so many you know uh, clients of mine who ask me you mean you live in india and you've never seen snow in your life i haven't because i haven't gone that far up north that is the vast geography of india and the diversity i can live my entire life not not seeing snow at all but there's still so much more to see so i'm saying please read books articles blogs watch all travel channels tv youtube insta whatever you have just keep filling your mind with a lot of travel stories because that will inspire you make notes research and plan i think that is so important now i'm saying it's not where you travel but how this was written by a canadian writer who apparently lives in rishikesh and she has traveled solo for the last 5 years i wish i could pick her blog and send uh, you know share it but you should know how she is giving you advice on traveling in india they love our country by the way despite all they hear they like to come here and discover it for themselves and they go back feeling it's not at all what they have read which is why i use this everywhere as a caveat i use it saying whatever you can rightly say about india the opposite is also true that again was said by a british lady and if you say this up front then you can say anything else because you know we we can t i would have said something to you about um, you know himachal apples and somebody will say no actually that's not true but it's not done like this so this helps me you know this bails me out now i want to um, introduce madhavi shah to you she is a solo traveler she's a woman traveler and i spoke to her yesterday unfortunately i could only get through to her yesterday so she's traveled for years now she's uh, you know she's been traveling alone into all kinds of places in india and by train and by bus so you know she has given us some advice that i'm happy to share it with you she writes her her uh, bucket list or her uh, plans or her uh, you know whatever she wants to do she jots down in a little book like that so she says that her research is very extensive the minute she knows where she wants to go she she researches that place and she writes down even the commute the, the how you're going to manage it and the time it'll take and so on extensive research but that is sensible so now this again knowledge is power definitely for the solo traveler this is what they say and she says as a madhavi this is what madhavi says you know as a male she would have even taken if she was you know uh, traveling uh, alone and she was a man she would have taken lifts from truck drivers and gone anywhere and it wouldn't she would have even loved it unfortunately for women there are some things that you do and you don't and we have to be careful travel by all means and feel empowered to travel but do the right things so she says um, these are all madhavi's points of course download the lonely planet guide books so there are many guide books you should you should download these on your phone today and use them as a as a guide for you wherever you're going wiki voyage vlogs blogs everything she says you can even try to meet the dalai lama if you really want to which means if you have a plan and if you work towards it it's all possible you can do it jot down important numbers names bus timings etc in a diary it's not just a backup but can also be an important part of your memory later she says nothing beats the value of local insights like i told you before yes talk to the local people talk to uh, people at a store uh you know people at a restaurant or something like that than to a taxi driver that's what she says if you know instead of talk, talking to a taxi driver or a guide who's a professional there you know it might help sometimes to get whether uh, the information that you have on hand is right or not you know it could confirm your research information 
yes keeps maps handy too and only if you have a plan should you share it with your family i think this is a very valuable information you're all young and i am a mother of a 20 year old so i know what it means when i know my child is going away somewhere and i want to know where exactly she's going is she safe is she is she you know inside a room by six o'clock in the evening and so on but you have to have a plan you have to have a concrete plan and only when you know that you can share it with your family should you do that okay don't keep them at the tip of anxiety traveling solo is all about going with the flow so yes when you go solo the advantage is you can do things at your own wish and whim so you can like she says if you like a particular view in a certain place you could stay on if you don't like your host you can just move on so there's so much you can do and then she says this is very nice and very i like it you start your trip on your own but along the way you're sure to meet people and traveling the same path they might be the same wavelength they might be the same um, with the same mindset you know and then you realize you're not alone at all actually in the world there are about 7 7 billion plus people traveling so you're not alone it just gives you a very reassuring feeling right now safe travels for women yeah there are some tips that i have to share with you i even wrote about being safe in india for a, an international magazine none of the statistics will tell you that india is a more dangerous country than any other place in fact if you read this article on the right it clearly says that sweden and usa are all way up there compared to india when it comes to being unsafe for women however we have an image but you need to go out there and see it for yourself be aware you have to be mindful you have to be cognizant of what is happening around you and you have to be sensible you need to know what your personality is if you are the kind who prefers to uh, you know come back home by a certain time and not explore anything at night do that ideally do that your attitude your confidence everything will matter don't look scared when people are looking at you i always say don't make eye contact with strangers that is something i tell women if you make eye contact with strangers chances are that they can sense fear and don't allow a man to sense fear in you that is so important when you're traveling alone i have seen that choose a safe time of the day to travel and yes get under a roof before it's dark we've said this many times it is better to be safe than sorry that way it also she says madhavi says you can come back to your room and you might get enough time to talk to your um, you know co hosteliers or whoever guests that you're staying with or even the host you could chat up with the host and learn a few things about that particular place so many things that you wouldn't read about on the internet or even in any book trust your human instincts that is so important you know when to you know fight or flight they say you have to know when there is an unpredictable situation and these are bound to happen you need to trust your instinct and see what should be done at that time which is why i always I, i'll come to that again but i think you always need to keep your phones charged we'll come to that slide ask information at a local grocery store like we said yes spending has been inversely proportional to the experiences gathered so she says instead of taking for instance she's giving an example if you instead of taking a 2500 rupee taxi from goa you can actually take a bus to vasco so there are many other options to talk to the locals and they will help you it can cut down on your cost and you can also drive you know have a safe ride to the place that you're going to and you might be able to save time as well so these are things we would encourage you to do again among the do's and don'ts we are saying that every state is different from the other don't think that just because you've come down to south india sometime i know south india no it's not they're all four different states they're all four different languages different kinds of people different kinds of attitudes cultures everything so please read up about the culture even if you're familiar with the place and region most indians are the warmest friendly people but you still need to keep your antennae up there being nice and naive are two different things for instance you can be nice to people but when they get too friendly you know where to stop put that wall around you you have to know where to stop you have to just be cordial to people do not give any personal information this is especially for women do not give personal information at all uh, even if you have to you know you can you can give information of somebody who's uh, who's a male and somebody who would come to your protection is what i would say meet like minded people and choose group activities so that you're there doing things together and um, 
ITDC offers fantastic packages out there. You must look up their website. There are a lot of NGOs too who give you a lot of travel packages based on the interest that you have. So look up and find NGOs who are doing genuine courses for rural India, for women, for youth actually, yeah? Yeah, travel and stay, you should book your tickets well in advance. You should have planned very well. And there is one Westerner says, pick the upper berth on a train. So perhaps that makes sense too. And opt for a second sleeper, I mean, the sleeper class or a third AC and not the second class. I believe in that too, because the second class can be a little intimidating if you're not traveling with a male member or if you're not in a group at least. So do those things that will keep you safe arrive and depart from your travel destination at a time that is safe. Please look up ITDC hotels. You can, you have the Youth Hostel Association, YHAI. They're all, they're, they all offer affordable, clean and safe places. And they're not very far off from, you know, where you want to go, which means accessibility won't be an issue either. I would say book directly on the website. Sometimes that helps. Because all said and done, if there's something that's going wrong, you can always go back to them. <clears throat> so these are the things I told you, the uh, ITDC website and the Youth Hostels Association. You can have a safe and comfortable stay with all these people. Technology is your strength. So use it to the best. Make good use of it. All the smartphones, research well, plan, make notes, put it on your phone. Put all the videos that you want to where you're going. You can actually do your Google videos and put it out there. Download all the necessary apps to be safe. I believe the Indian Police on Call app is very good. There's a women's safety app. There's a DigiLocker for your documents, your travel apps, guides, everything. Make sure that you've got all those before you go. Make sure you're very well planned. That's the, that's the key thing here. Yeah, your phones have to be charged. Power banks have to be handy. You have to... Uh, this is something that we've noticed we can do when you're traveling in a bus and you feel intimidated that you're alone or you feel um, you're feeling a little lonely. Just call up somebody, call a friend or a family and talk to them because that makes you feel a little lighter. You know that you're talking to somebody and people around also know that you're connected to somebody. So it really helps. It's a psychological thing, but it really helps. I would say name dropping also helps because we had a bad incident on a railway once and I had to drop in uh, names of people we knew from the railway department so that that would intimidate those people, you know, who were causing a little trouble for us. And uh, I would say that it probably helps at that time. You just have to say, you know, why, why don't we just call so-and-so? He's the engine chief engineer in the railways or he's so-and-so in the railways. So you can use, or even a police, uh, somebody you know in the family or among your friend circles. So sometimes when you sense um, trouble coming, you have to be just a little smart and do these things. Okay? Travel responsibly, that is so important. This is another section itself we should have, but I, we don't have the time for it. Responsible travel is all about being sensitive to the earth, sensitive to nature, sensitive to the local culture, to the people and protecting their land. You go to look at somebody's place, right? Somebody visits your house and if they come and make a mess of your house, after they leave, you're going to say, what kind of people are they? Don't they have any culture? Similarly, when you go to visit a place, especially in rural India, they keep their, their environment so well that they don't want you to come and throw litter or plastic. Say no to plastic, don't litter, and don't do all this only when you're traveling. Please inculcate this as a culture in your everyday lives. It's very difficult, whether it's your own family or your friends, it's very difficult to change them, but don't bother. You change as an individual, that makes a big difference. I remember back in school, there was a friend of mine, Venki, who said we should not litter and we would save all our um, you know, papers and any litter toffee, toffee wrappers in our pockets. We would keep it in our pockets and walk around till we reached a dustbin or reached home. But that habit has stayed. I have made another friend, Hari, do it. He's done that to many others. So, you know, don't wait for the world to change. Don't wait for people... Uh, in your family, people in your friend circle, everybody to change. You change and you stick to that. You continue that so that whether you live your life every day or whether you go on a travel, you know, to some place, you will follow that strictly as much as possible. Carry your own steel water bottles so you don't buy those water bottles unnecessarily. 
you can fill water from wherever you stay wherever you go to if you know the water is safe you can get boiled water you can get safe water you can fill it up so make these small changes in your everyday life also what i'm trying to tell you is wherever you travel you should gather experiences and discover yourself you're all university students most of you who are tuning in today and you might tell me that oh yeah but you know we need money for that or we need no you can plan you can do you can take local bus you can eat local dishes you don't have to go to the best of restaurants in that place you can, the best i'm talking about can be the local one talk to people find out where you can i think that makes a big difference talking to you know people when i say strangers it means i think this also was something that madhavi told me about when you talk to strangers we mean strangers in a different land but they soon become your friend you listen to their stories and you have something to share with others i want to play a video for you uh, this is from another traveler a girl called priyamada who's based in bangalore and she is a travel and tourism um, graduate too and she works with expatriates like me she helps them with all their immigration needs and she is a traveler who's done so well travels length and breadth of the country over the years as a woman and she's inspired so much that she started something called tuk tuk travels i i can get the name later tuk tuk which actually teaches children about different parts of the world through lovely little experiences that these girls have had so you can do so much today you know you can start a career with travel if you know exactly what you want to do so let me see now your journey begins but before that i will play priyamada's video for you hello good morning everyone my name is priyamada majumdar and i'm absolutely thrilled and honored to be speaking to you today on a subject that i'm fiercely passionate about traveling so thank you bindu memnan for giving me this platform to speak to young minds about uh, 20 years ago i was where you are today an university student doing my masters in travel and tourism administration from there i've gone on to work in the global mobility industry where i help corporate clients relocate their employees from one country to another for work but enough about myself today is about traveling the joy it brings and the lessons it teaches us growing up my dad would often tell me travel is education and i never quite understood what he meant by it later on i realized that subconsciously i had picked up life skills important life skills thanks to my travels life skills such as adaptability being open minded being resourceful having better communication skills organizational skills and as a woman being more aware and confident in any unknown environment i began my travels uh, i think during my university days by myself or with a group of friends simple day trips in local buses nothing luxurious and we didn't have gps at that time so we had to rely on strangers to give us directions or recommend restaurants or local markets and so on from that um i also explored government package tours like kstdc you know taking us from bangalore to belur and halibir i even took my parents along because you know it was well organized you're in a air conditioned bus there is a there's a guide there is a lunch stop so it was easy this then gave me the confidence to go on overnight trips especially train journeys because india really has an extensive rail network and i took full advantage of it and visited absolutely beautiful locations whether it was hampi or kochi or ajmer um puri in orissa or tanjore i loved these trips and i realized that they were not as scary or difficult as i would have i as i had imagined them to be i learned you know to adjust um with different types of food uh dress code timings not all states in india or uh, or not all regions in india have the same waking and sleeping hours so that impacts uh, opening hours of shops and restaurants for example and and my vocabulary changed for instance i would no longer say uh, my city and your city it would all be about 
my favorite cities in India. Um, you know, little by little, I realized that my comfort zone had expanded. It had gone bigger and bigger. Again, as women, I think we sometimes put this imaginary Lakshman Rekha around us and I was able to step out of it. I realized that I had less to fear than fear itself. Um, these skills were, were useful to me and I suppose they will be useful to you whether you decide to join an university or do further studies in a city that is not your own or, or, or in one that you didn't grow up in or join a company where you have to work with a diverse set of colleagues, whether it's communication skills or adaptability or resourcefulness, these skills will be useful to you. So I wish you lots of travel. I hope that you will take this opportunity uh, in the coming days to discover India, it's your country, and through these travels, you will be able to learn more about yourself and develop skills that will be useful to you. So here's to Apna Desh Dekho. Bye. Over to you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Vintuji. You can stop sharing then. Yeah. So first of all, let me thank Vintuji. She took us from north to south, south to north rather, south to north, and so many beautiful places. It was a real learning experience, and I'm sure your children must be groomed very well because the experiential learning which they got during the process of their growing up, which was, of course, done by you as a passion. So it must have made them a very, very, I mean, holistic development of the child must have been there. And I'm sure many of our students must have been encouraged to do a lot of traveling, traveling seeing your experience. And, and not only the places they visit, also the experiences they learn. I myself witnessed, like we, I would say, six months back, we went to an agricultural university in Pantanagar. And there, when we saw the agricultural practice, like they made us so the Re, I mean, replantation of uh, paddy, paddy plants, I mean, re, retransplanting the uh, paddy crop and standing in the mud and doing it, seeing how the honey is taken out of the honeybees, how the dairy is maintained, how the fishery is maintained, everything. It was so fascinating and I was so excited that when I came back to AIU, we started, mm -hmm. we, we, we made an MOU with ICAR that many of our students who are not, not from the agricultural background, who are from the general universities, they should go to the agricultural universities and experience all these agricultural practices. They should practically sow the seeds or say, put the pesticides or fertigation or fertilization or anything, even see how the honey is taken out, even sort of uh, taking out the milk from the cows and all. So it is so fascinating. So that Experiential learning is something which is very, very important. That is what we learned from your talk today. And also what I also suppose is uh, that if you really want to experience, do you should travel on a small budget. If you travel on a big budget, you just go on say aeroplanes and stay in five-star hotels, you are not really exploring. So if you're traveling on a meager budget, you will travel on trains, on the way you will talk to so many people. You will travel by public transport again, you will speak to so many people. So that will be a real learning experience and students are always short of budget. So traveling on a, on a small budget, that is more exploratory. Traveling solo or in friends, both are equally good. So do explore a lot of traveling. And I'm sure <clears throat> now you all must be waiting for the quiz because with the quiz, you get a lot of prizes also. So there is a quiz which is uh, crafted just for you based on the talk of Binduji. So whatever she has spoken for one hour, that all is put in the form of questions in the quiz. So if you have carefully seen the uh, <clears throat> seen and uh, heard her, you will be able to get full marks in the quiz. And once you do it well, we'll be giving you many, many prizes. Recent prize was a visit to Nagaland. A group of students went to Nagaland 
on the government expense and they were really excited about it. So do explore the country. It is very beautiful, very rich culturally, tourism. All the landscapes are there, whether it is hill or rivers or uh, oceans or deserts, everything is there in India. So do go on exploratory trip. And thank you, Binduji. Thank you for sharing with us those beautiful slides, those personal photographs, which really, I mean, I was also thinking of going to many, many of those places. So thank you very much. Thanks to Ministry of Tourism for organizing, organizing this program uh, in collaboration with Association of Indian Universities. The Association of Indian Universities, as you know, is an association of something like 870 universities. And the students who have joined today, they should be knowing that we are running a lot of sports events, including Halo India University Games. <laughs> we are running many youth affairs programs where you can be presenting your, say, skills, talent in those festivals. So a lot many things are being done by AIU. So do come, explore country, explore AIU, and explore your university wherever you are, and do participate. It's all, it, it shouldn't be all studies, studies, and studies. It should be studies plus sports, plus culture, plus tourism, plus everything. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks to all for joining. All the best for the quiz. And thank you, Binduji, for thank joining you. us today. Thank, thank you very you so much. much. I, I don't think one hour is enough to cover India. And yes. I felt I was rushing in many places. But I had I had, I had to just tease everybody with that little bit. It's like a teaser. It's like, you know, I had to put that picture out there just so you know that you can do these small travels. And it's all just in your backyard. I think that's yes. the lesson we wanted to give you. Uh, actually, whole life is not enough to explore the country. Not at all. Not at all. I, I seriously think so. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you so a lot. Much. Thank you, Thank you for listening in and for all the wonderful comments that are coming in. Ah, so, comments are really good. They are there. So enthralled, and then they are talking about how, how did you manage different languages, how are you doing it, and and then there are many invites also that if you want to come to Ladakh, be my guest. Yeah, I will. I will. I will. <laughs> yeah. That is good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Peter. Thank you very Thank, much. Thanks. I, I think one person has also written asked uh, which is a place that you went to that you know made you fall in love with traveling. Some beginner backpacker. It's yes. my home. It's my home in Kerala. You know when you wake up and you see that kind of a view. That just makes you feel you want to travel to places like that and discover more. So I think it all begins in your backyard. That's the message of this presentation. Yes. We don't see what is there right close to our house. All of you go back to your villages now, go back to your little towns and see what you, new thing you can find. Go put it out there on YouTube, start a, start a story about it and share it with the world. I think that's more important. Thank Thanks you so a lot. Thanks and uh, do yeah. attempt to attempt the quiz, all the children. Do attempt the quiz and wait for our next episode. We'll be with you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Binduji.